this screen. Okay. And part two is okay. Let's get into the uh, part two. And before go to part two, uh, okay, let's confirm which terminology is already explained. Homology, homoplasy is okay, right? Yes. And the synapomorphy, I haven't, I haven't mentioned anything about synapomorphy. And the common ancestor, uh, I not really difficult concept uh, then. Uh, you already catch kind of the meaning. And the monophyletic, paraphyletic. And the convergence to evolution is okay. And the serial homology is, I haven't explained the serial homology. It's, it's quite later uh, in this presentation or next presentation, I will exp uh, the next part, I will explain this. And the anterior, posterior, dorsal, ventral, cranial, postcranial, trunk, caudal, sagittal, horizontal, transverse. They think. You are okay. I think you are okay. And I, I haven't mentioned anything about this. Okay, in this part, I uh, will start to explain a little bit more complicated uh, uh, or more detailed issue in my using my previous work of the Hagbish Ibodevo as example. And I will, let's, I will think about similarity again. Okay, then, so, uh, now I'm starting on the gold of, yeah, yeah, uh, then my previous work, Hagfish Ibodevo project, okay. So, uh, after, uh, the no, uh, after, after, I, I forgot, I, I, uh, during, uh, my, this is my postdoc uh, project, and before I uh, come to Taiwan, I did uh, this uh, work, Hagfish Ivo Debo project. And Hagfish is a jawless vertebrate, and again, I will show you this picture, and uh, what is the difference between them is uh, uh, this, they are jawless vertebrate, and living jawless vertebrate is lung place and Hagfish. And their morphological feature is obviously differ from the uh, jawed vertebrate. And the mouth is uh, different. And let's uh, and the fossil agnosians a lot. And not only this kind of eel-like shape agnosians. The uh, fossil data said there are so many armored armored. Uh, scale 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 were armored. Uh, uh, Agnesians were, uh, were living in the uh, Devonian Sea or early uh, time uh, sea, and uh, they are uh, uh, really uh, rich in the number of the species. But uh, just we now only can see these two lineage. And uh, in the book, what I introduced to you, the comparative morphology, always hagfish is located at the basal position of the basal position of the phylogenetic tree because this one has a quite strange morphological features. So there are uh, two different, there were what still, uh, still this phylogenetic trees survive in the, the textbook, but uh, there are uh, two uh, different uh, theory about the early uh, vertebrate species, especially the problem is this one, the hagfish. So this cyclostome theory is really early time already uh, estimated this phylogenetic relationship, cyclostomes, uh, which is uh, which this group uh, contains lamprey and hagfish, right? This is a monophyletic group. So monophyletic of the lampreys and hagfish are supported by the molecular data. And uh, this craniate theory is uh, uh, from the, uh, f the researcher of the morphology and the fossil data. And uh, in this phylogenetic tree, hangfish is located on the basal position because this is, uh, looks like really primitive, right? And nowadays we know that this phylogenetic tree is, uh, is no problem. But uh, this relationship was really, really a big problem. W whether this one is uh, really uh, 
primitive, just primitive or ancestral vertebrate species. The primitive is really, it's this word cause kind of misunderstanding. So then the ancestral is much more nicer. The hagfish is much more, must be closely related with the gnosostomes because uh, gnosostomes and lamprey has a neural crest of cells and these neural crest of cells are deepicerialized. And the hagfish has no deepicerialized so cells. And the vascular system is, we have a closed vascular system, but the, 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 according to the old early, all the time description, uh, researcher said, a researcher said this, the vascular system of the hagfish is open, and the inner ear is really simple, and the vertebral element is absent. So, so then to categorize this, to categorize hagfish as a vertebrate is really strange because hagfish has no vertebrate and the neural crest cell is, looks like ancestral. Then always this one located in the here, the vertebrata including all living thing, living craniates except mixi, mixiniformis mean hagfish. This is exceptional uh, based on this kind of the, the classic textbook. Okay, let's think about this phylogenetic relationship. So people s s really simply said, hey, this phylogenetic tree is something strange. I also think so. But the problem is, uh, based on this phylogenetic tree, how can you explain uh, the, this looks like ancestral feature of hagfish? It's quite important point. So then, okay, phylogenetic tree, this molecular phylogenetic tree is correct. Yeah, that's it. Or how living things can change their own form, modifying their developmental system or uh, during longer term evolution. What happened? Is, uh, this is originally what I, uh, what I was interested in. And I published the similar paper. And now, firstly, I will explain the I will explain more, a little bit more in detail about the differences between lamprey and hagfish. And uh, you see the shape of the mouth is different. And uh, this is looks like, uh, like, uh, like if you want to stick something on the wall, the sh there's uh, like a plastic rubber, rubber sack, or how, how can <laughs> I forgot in English. If you want to stick something on the wall, the shape is like uh, the surface is flat and the stick on the, the, the fridge or wall is really nice. The structure of the lamprey's mouth is like this. I forgot the name, but uh, uh, when you see this picture, immediately you realize how this uh, mouth shape is fitting for the, the, like, attaching to the surface is like this. My ex-colleague uh, did this work, and he, uh, for the artificial fertilization, uh, I already, like, uh, not paralyzed, how can I say, anesthetized for the artificial fertilization and dissection work. This one is uh, already unnecessized, but uh, this shape is, even though this lamprey sleep well, but uh, this, still, this structure is enough to attach to the, the head. So then, th this one is really specialized for the parasitic uh, life. And the hagfish is uh, like this. Hagfish is, has no biting jaw, because this one is jawless vertebrate. Uh, I already mentioned. Uh, then this one has a the bilaterally opening, uh, like uh, how can I say, mouth, bilaterally opening mouth and eat something. And the developmental process also, the egg and lab are also different. The lamprey egg is like this size, hagfish egg is this size. And the hagfish is a direct developer without, uh, uh, without any, like, uh, uh, metamorphosis. Uh, this one can develop directly, right? And the lamprey is uh, uh, through the metamorphosis they form the final form. So then, the o obviously, the size of uh, the egg is different. Then the major, first major point is difference between the the uh, lamprey and the uh, hagfish. Uh, let's focusing uh, focusing on the. Neural crest, let's see their difference. Uh, this one is uh, 
、シャーク、ニューラルクレストセルズ。ニューラルクレストセルズ are indicated by green color. And this one is l a m p r e t e neural crest cells. And let's chop these、uh, l a m p r e t e shark in this level in the transverse section. That this is a transverse brain or transverse section. And the upper part of the dorsal part of the neural tube close. And、uh, from lateral side, left, right, lateral side. These migrating cells migrate into the different place of the body and they are differentiated into the neuron pigment cells and the cartridges. This, this is neural crest cells in the lamprey and the、uh, uh, gna- and the gnasostome, the shark, and the, we, we human also have this kind of migratory neural crest cells. Then, So, a vertebrate body is relatively big, and, but we have so many, so nicely sophisticated and highly diverged sensory organ and、uh, skeleton, also, even though our body is really big. Because uh, this uh, book said,、uh, the author said,、uh, because of the neural migratory neural crest cells. But、uh, hangfish h a s no migratory neural crest cells. They show the, this type of the shape. Uh, based on the paper、uh, by Cornell, 1940s, quite old time paper. So then, neural crest cell population migrating as、uh, their favorite place and make a new neuron or a cartilage. Then we can make complicated body shape, but hagfish. Has no this type of the migratory neural crest cells. It looks like ancestral. Is it true or not? But、uh, to observe the neural crest cells, we need to find the, the embryo. But in the history, just only one guy. This guy,、uh, this guy is not the middle century guy. This is a, 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 he, he's American, Bash for the Dean. And his hobby is, his hobby is、uh, collect, collect, so many, collect so many different types of the、uh, Middle Ages armor. And, the, and he, he really l i k e this kind of the, the activity. And he also l i k e、like, uh, to see the describe. The, he also published the similar nice、uh, paper about.、Uh, Uh, ancestral、uh, vertebra- early vertebrate species. And one of the, his report is、uh, this one. Report, his report is this one is uh, uh, on, embryology, on embryology of b u t e r o s s t o m a s t o t i d a This one. And this one published and using more than 100 of the, 100 of the、uh, embryo, he carefully describes the developmental process, which is one from the Monterey Bay. But、uh, later, after his、uh, publication, basically almost no nice, no, no nice published paper about hagfish embryology. And one of the reasons is they are living in the relatively deep sea area. And it's really hard to、uh, catch. It, this is one of the reasons. But、uh, in Japan or Taiwan, there is one species, Epitatoretus brugeri, living in the sh- relatively shallow water area. And I went to Shimane Prefecture this time and uh, uh, catch the hagfish with,、uh, using this kind of the fish trap with this fisherman. And this fisherman is really help, helpful. And、uh, he helped me to catch so many hagfish. And this is a、uh, mucus or slime. And uh, uh, slime is、uh, this, like this. And then it's、uh, this kind of sl-、uh, slimy slime m a k e me convinced that、uh, it's really hard to maintain in our aquarium, of, in the conventional aquarium facility. But、I'm, I was a really lucky person. I got the、uh, hagfish、uh, eggs, but、uh, I don't know. I couldn't identify. The which one is fertilized and which one is not fertilized. Then I couldn't identify fertilized egg, but uh, uh, wait a long time, around five months, is I thought that I have to quit my postdoc 
position, postdoc job, and I have to clean up my aquarium tank. But uh, I found uh, this type of the shape, is, which is similar. It's uh, exactly the same with uh, with uh, the the figure which is published, which is published by the Bashford Dean, the, the armor guy, and uh, I got a total of seven embryos. And uh, I did uh, histology. And uh, this histology suggests that I carefully remove uh, the hagfish uh, like a uh, shell and uh, made a section. Is sh show this one shows uh, migratory neural crest cells. And this one is uh, a badly fixed one. I directly put in the fixatives and uh, I open it and uh, made a section. And this in this procedure, I could uh, I see this kind of the pocket-like structure, and uh, I couldn't uh, identify the, the epithelialized and uh, migratory neural crest cells. And uh, this method is the same as previous uh, paper, which is uh, published in the 1940, uh, more than 500, uh, 5, 50 years ago. Then this pocket structure, that pocket structure may be artifact. And, uh, uh, some uh, people in the, uh, the chick, uh, chick uh, uh, researcher, the chicken uh, uh, development the researcher using the chick embryo for the developmental biology used the, this antibody HNK1. And I thought that this one stain the neural crest, crest cell in the chick, then I used it. But uh, the result is uh, mm, not like this. It's, uh, this one is negative. Uh, then uh, it can be happened, the neural crest cell are HNK1 negative. This means uh, I need a molecular marker. Uh, but uh, uh, like I just I have only limited the number of the embryo. Then I did uh, uh, analysis of the gene expression pattern. Pax 6 is in the neural tube, and the Pax 3, 7 is the dorsal part of the uh, body. This is a, a section of the uh, I think oh, this uh, embryo and uh, uh, SOX uh, genes, SOX9 genes are expressed in the migratory neural crest cell, but the uh, image is not really nice, but I already used this one. So this one is the left one, is this one. But uh, uh, I did it. I using the single embryo, I succeeded to get uh, the image of the SOX9, which is um, one of the marker gene of the neural crest cell, and you can recognize migratory uh, neural crest cells in here. Then this result said hackfish also has the epithelialized neural crest cells. Then this result uh, suggesting that even though we accept the monophyletic relationship of lamprey and hackfish, they have the same migratory neural crest cells, then even though this phylogenetic, under the, this phylogenetic relationship, we can explain the, uh, we can make this kind of scenario. Mm, we can uh, assume or pre presume this kind of uh, evolutionary scenario. In the common ancestor, already they have migratory neural crest cells. Uh, then even though the, these fossil species are already extinct, but uh, it's okay. Uh, because they are sharing the common ancestor, then they have the same type of the neural crest cells. Okay, hagfish is vertebrate, but uh, still there is a problem because uh, hagfish has no vertebral element. Vertebral less backbone, less vertebrate. It sounds strange. Okay, I will gradually start the, the, this this part. So then, uh, the still the problem is uh, uh, actual, uh, actual skeletal element or vertebral element, vertebral. Uh, lamprey and the glossostom has backbone. Backbone. You can touch your backbone. Not, not directly, but we have a segmentary arranged uh, vertebra. And the lamprey also have. And but the thorax, the, the white. The traditional or conventional text book want to locate this hagfish as a, a basal position um, because this one has no uh, vertebral element or vertebra. So uh, 
This is the shark's transverse section. I made a transverse section like this. And in the transverse plane, you can recognize uh, this, is a, this is not a natural color. I stained uh, with uh, dye, Arusian blue and uh, Arizarin red. And uh, you recognize these three parts from this side, the neural arch. Uh, vertebral centrum and the hemal arch, like this. And uh, this is a lateral view. And basically, the vertebrae, the vertebra can be distinguished, or divided into uh, four different uh, uh, element, or four different part. Uh, Baji dorsal, interdorsal, Baji ventral, and uh, interventral. So this is a basic component of the uh, our backbone. But in the lamprey, the ventral part is missing, like this. The, this one and this one is the same color. And the hagfish is totally missing, the uh, axial skeleton of vertebral element. And in the, the horizon, this is transverse, and this is a horizontal section. And in the horizontal section, you can recognize segmentally arranged uh, vertebral element in the shark. And the lamprey also have this cartilage. Yes, they are, looks like, closely related group. But how about in the hagfish? Um, the history of the hagfish uh, anatomy is quite long, and uh, more than 100 years ago, Johannes Miller carefully uh, dissected a hagfish body. And uh, of course, he observed uh, a skeleton in the head region and the trunk region. But uh, at least, I, uh, I haven't seen any uh, descri described uh, uh, hagfish uh, vertebral bone or vertebral cartilage. Uh, in these uh, reported uh, uh, articles, except this one, Ayers and Jackson. So in his paper, more than, uh, their paper, more than 100 years ago, they described these uh, small dot-like structure in the caudal region, like this. And what's, uh, what's, uh, it's actually, what is this dot? And, then they themselves has no idea what is these uh, skeletons. Then I myself made uh, hagfish uh, uh, skeleton uh, skeletal skeleton sample of the in the hagfish. And uh, as previous early researcher said, in the trunk region I couldn't see any uh, cartilaginous element, but in the tail region you can recognize these tiny dot like this. And uh, I made a sec, uh, I ma uh, and uh, what is them? What is actually, uh, how homologous with this one? And uh, mm, this one or that one or this one? Lamprey missing the ventral, uh, Lamprey missing any, has no any cartilaginous element in the ventral side, but hagfish has these tiny dot. This is not a code. And here you can see the cartridge element. And uh, I made a section and uh, I compared between lamprey and the shark. And uh, uh, this section said, yes, lamprey, uh, uh, okay, let's compare the shark. The shark has a really nicely, soft, nicely sophisticated axial uh, skeletons, both uh, dorsal and the ventral side, but hagfish has a cartilages at the ventral side. And in the, his, in the HG section also, you can recognize like this. And this morphology is similar with sharks' uh, hemal arch. They are looks like the same. Okay, I want to say that this one and this one is homologous. Is it okay? <laughs> homologous. Yes. Yes. I hope that the people believe that I found a backbone from the hagfish. But the problem is, uh, I, when I made the horizontal section in here, the topologically quite ambiguous. Shark is a myoseptum skeleton. Myoseptum skeleton, right? 
And the lamprey, this white part is a cartilage, the skeleton. Skeleton, myoseptum. Skeleton, myoseptum. But the hagfish is, uh, because of my technique, well, hagfish is, is uh, originally or naturally hagfish vertebral element is like this. I don't know, but uh, the result is like this. And the even though I show the looks like homologous structure, I, I thought that I need more, uh, much more strong evidence. So the problem is uh, like uh, uh, here I want to explain the, the developmental origin of uh, uh, skeleton in the but of in the actual uh, actual skeleton or vertebra. So then, firstly. They are derived from the somite. And the somite is, uh, this is a zebrafish embryo. And uh, in the vertebrate body, uh, human also, uh, during developmental process, they made segmentally arranged the somite, somite cell population like this. And a really nice uh, oscillation system make kind of the really nice uh, segmental pattern. And uh, this, in, at this moment, uh, there is no uh, skeleton or there is no really hard bone or soft cartilage also. This is just a cell population, segmentary arranged cell population. And, and the somite differentiate into the several different cell population. This is a transverse section of the embryo and the ventral part of the somite differentiate into the sclerotons and finally they form the uh, actual skeleton or vertebral element or vertebra. And uh, how about in the hagfish? Is that there is this kind of mesenchymal cell population. This one also 100 years ago, Price, uh, he published this type of the paper and I myself also made a section. And yeah, actually there is a scleroton, looks like a scleroton like population. And this one, should express Pax1 or Pax9 gene or twist gene, which is similar with uh, uh, sclerotomal cells, the hagfish also. And I correct, I was uh, really lucky, not not previous one, in 2008, I succeeded in correcting so many different stages of the embryo. And uh, I pick up several embryos and I made a section. And uh, yeah, this is looks like same as a conventional vertebrate species, or there is a sclerotome-like population. And I did uh, the using molecular marker, Pax19 or twist genes, I did uh, analysis of the gene expression pattern and the result suggested that this expression pattern is the same with uh, a chick embryo. So this means uh, hagfish also have a molecular system which can form the segmentary arranged somite and the sclerotom, and finally they can form these uh, cartilaginous element, even though although their segmental segmentation pattern is not similar with uh, lamprey or of uh, uh, lamprey or gnathostomes, they, they have, this uh, hagfish have, has a molecular system which can form the uh, actual skeleton. Then uh, people really want to, some people really want to uh, put, locate hagfish at the basal position, but uh, I think we don't need to do the, we don't need to locate this one as a most uh, ancestral uh, vertebrate because we already know that hagfish has, uh, hag this uh, hagfishes have uh, actual skeletal system or vertebral element. And uh, this result also uh, suggested that they are the same group and the common ancestor uh, might have uh, Pax six, uh, Pax one or Pax nine expressed sclerotomal cell population, and the, and the same. So they also share the same uh, morphological feature. And interestingly, this one, Euphanelops, this one's skeleton is well described. And the, at the dorsal and both dorsal and the ventral side, this one has a uh, segmentary arranged actual skeleton. Then this is consistent with the result of our hagfish uh, study. Then, then 
using Markazin, I can solve the problem of the whether the hagfish is primitive or not. And then, then I this I already mentioned, explained my previous story about the similarity or homology. Synapomorphy. Synapomorphy. I haven't used this word. Synapomorphy is quite a useful word. Uh, for the uh, morphological study, synapomorphy is a uh, apomorphy is derived trait. The synapomorphy is an apomorphy shared by two or more taxa. More specifically said, uh, two taxa uh, sharing the common ancestor or something like this. So then, the, in the molecular phylogenetics, uh, in the more field of the molecular phylogenetics, some people use this word, but uh, especially morphology or evodevo people use this word, synapomorphy. This is quite important to word and concept. So, for example, uh, loach, catfish, carp, they are categorized into the, the same group, but it uh, looks like they are the different. They are, looks like different. The, uh, they all of them have uh, this kind of whisk, uh, whisker like a barber, but uh, their body is uh, oh, this one is eel like, or oh, this one is a really fish like, or oh, this one is uh, like a uh, mm, uh, catfish is catfish like. <laughs> so, so different, but they share the webarian apparatus. Although, uh, in the this is a lateral view of the goldfish juvenile, and uh, this is uh, this is what I thought, but uh, originally from the uh, your paper, I think, and uh, the your first author paper, <laughs> I was corresponding also, and uh, then leaves and the vertebra, and here is the shape is slightly strange, and uh, and in the magnified view, the fifth rib is like this, but uh, the fourth and the uh, more anterior part of the lips are modified or changed or differ from the original shape. Looks like differ from the original shape. And this one is, a, these bones are connected with swim brother. And using swim brother, they catch the vibration or sound. And this sound transmit to the, the inner your auditory system. And this is called as this system is called the Weberian apparatus. Then, so then, even though they are morphologically, the surface uh, appearance, appearance is so different, but uh, they are categorized uh, into the same group because Weberian apparatus is shared, uh, shared among the, uh, like, uh, uh, Ostrophysi, or loach, or carp, or uh, the goldfish also. Then, then in the Wikipedia, you can see, you might you might find you may find this kind of description. The Weberian apparatus is an anatomical structure that connects the swim bladder to auditory system in fish belonging to the superorder Ostariophysi. But using synapomorphy, this line. Uh, of course, the information will be uh, fade out, but uh, s more simply said, Weberian apparatus is a, a synapomorphy of osteriophysi. So synapomorphy is commonly shared, but derived uh, phenotypic feature, or sometimes genotype also, okay, but usually a phenotype, phenotype, phenotypic feature. This is a synapomorphy. Okay, so then, you already catch the concept of the common ancestor synapomorphy or more uh, homology and homoplasy also. Yes. Right? right? Right. Then, then how can we identify the more homology in the different species? And which and which criteria is the best criteria for identification of homology or adult morphological feature or so molecular marker or embryological criteria? I, we can pick up similar different criteria and we can identify the homology but it's always cause the, the ambiguity or problem then the Venn diagram was in here is always showing the overlapping point right so then this is quite a uh, should be careful and annoying point and uh, in this scheme let's compare uh, between molecular data and morphological data. Ha have you seen this scheme? 
it is fast. It is fast time to show you this. This one. I think so. I think okay. <laughs> okay then. Nowadays we can get so many big genotype data or molecular data. Okay, I don't need to up to need. A, uh, okay. I don't need to approach around here. The genotype and the molecular data, and the morphological data also. And uh, firstly, the molecular evolution, the people who are dealing with large-scale molecular data is uh, like this. Uh, to reconstruct the phylogenetic tree, pick up the species A, species B, species C, species D's homologous gene and compare between, among them, between them, and make a data matrix. And based on this kind of multiple alignment or data matrix, reconstruct the phylogenetic tree like this. And this, originally, this kind of approaches are applied for the morphological data. Uh, insect or this kind of arthropod is relatively easy because their body is really articulated. and, and in the to the uh, evolution uh, evolution of the vertebrate species also uh, this the same approach can be applied uh, for example a, i prepare the species a b c d e and uh, we can compare even though they are di in the different lineage or oh, this fish uh, this uh, for example this shark uh, have uh, eyes and uh, this fish species missing the, the eyes Oh yeah, then this means uh, artificial these uh, the morphology number one is uh, in the D is uh, negative. Okay, let's make this kind of data matrix, and finally mm, we can reconstruct the phylogenetic relationship. Uh, sounds good or sounds bad? I have no. Uh, it's quite difficult to to say. Of course. The data of the molecular molecular data is a number of the molecular data is really really a lot, but uh, this is really hard to apply to the extinct species. Of course, nowadays some people extract the DNA from the extinct species, but sometimes really difficult. The good point of the morphological data is we can use the data from the extinct species of fossil data. But the problem is that missing data is really missing or just uh, missing. It's, it's quite hard to distinguish. Then I myself want to tend to employ or use the molecular data. But the point is because this molecular phylogenetic analysis is theoretically perfect, then we can trust it. Or, uh, basically, the concept is the same between these two. Uh, this is, uh, we should have to be careful, because uh, in the data matrix, the species A, it's ATG, nucleotide sequence ATG, CA. And uh, in this alignment, I recognize this A and this A is homologous. But why this A is not homologous, this A? <laughs> Location, is, Location is different. Some people there say I like it, but uh, interestingly, still this criteria is uh, depending on the human recognition. This is unavoidable. So then, Early time, people use, people recognize this eye and this eye is homologous. Okay, let's see the blind fish's eye is missing. Then homologous organ is missing. Uh, then uh, it look, sounds like classic. Really classic was the way it looks like, sounds like primitive, but the identification of the homology is even though we use the molecular data, what we are doing is basically the same, right? Yes. Then this means the argument of the homology in the morphological data is much more complicated. Even though the molecular data is, there is ambiguity, and the morphological data also really ambiguous, then, okay, 
Let's use molecular data. Using molecular data, the, our morphological study will be really nice. Is it? Maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe. Mm, uh, there is a similar uh, idea. Uh, using molecular data, we can use the embryological data or information will be increased. And the really big impact or really nice story is Fox gene cluster. Uh, have you? I think you know, at least you know the name of the Fox gene cluster. Yes. And uh, there is Hox gene, which the gene which has a homeo domain, is located, tandemly located like this in the genome of the, the Drosophila or, and the mouse. And their expression pattern is uh, corresponding to the identity of the vertebral element. Sounds really beautiful, isn't it? And. Uh, then homologous gene or orthologous gene's expression pattern and their arrangement in Drosophila and the mouse and the human is comparable. It sounds really great, isn't it? But why it sounds really great? <laughs> why? Because uh, the person who are dealing with this kind of work uh, get a really nice internationally really nice price or there is a scientific meaning, or because people apply the molecular data. Only the molecular? Uh, the, 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 I think the point, in, to me, the really important point is, uh, uh, because tandem relocated, not like this, the, the important point is the, this kind of the, the morphological feature is totally depending on, sounds like uh, totally depending on the human recognition, right? Yes. Yes, because uh, cervical, uh, head region is here, the neck region is here. Human identified this region is a neck region, then cervical, yeah, cervical, human defined. And this st part start the lips, and uh, we will call, okay, this part is thoracic. Uh, this is, uh, sounds like arbitrary human decide, something like this. Because we assume they assume are the same part. Same part. Just, uh, oh, this is just the imagination of the morphologist's idea. <laughs> but uh, interestingly, this kind of the human recognition, the human recognized part is consistent with molecular data. This is quite a, a really big, um, big surprising point. And this is comparable with different species species and even though the distantly related species, I already mentioned this one is a protostome and a deuterostome. Totally different but still comparable. Then this make kind of the confusion about the definition of the homology. Because they don't look exactly Exa like. and the, 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 I mean uh, the gene is the same, and the, genes and the cell populations, the same or similar cell population can be identified based on the gene expression pattern. But morphologically, they form the totally different uh, uh, shape. Or morphologically, people haven't identified, they are not homologous. Right. Right, right. So then this makes confusion. The marker gene and the homology is a kind of really big tool for the morphological study or evil devil people. But it makes kind of the confusable, uh, like a confusable problem or confusable issue. I ex When I explain, Brain, the, this confusion I use always use the Pax6 gene. This is really strong gene, a strong gene in the sense of the like uh, argument of the evolution. Or well, this one has so many different contexts. And this scheme said the human eyes is this is wild type human eyes is like this. And the Pax6 heterozygous mutant human eyes like this. And the uh, mouse 
in the mouse, you can recognize the, the, this one. Wild type is like this. And the heterozygous one is like this, right? And the Pax BG in the zebrafish is all degenerated. And uh, this one is a uh, wild type. And the Drosophila also. Then Pax 6 expressed uh, uh, cell or tissue is homologous among the species. Looks like, looks like, like, like this. And let's see the Pax 6 a Pax 6 the expression in the zebrafish embryo. And here, the brain expressed the Pax 6, and the eye also expressed the Pax 6, and the neural tube and the brain, the spinal cord, this area also expressed the Pax 6. This means uh, m eyes and the brains are homologous. No. Why? Because, but you see, the, this marker gene expressed different tissues. They must be homologous. It sounds strange. Yes. It sounds strange because uh, we know that the, the, the gene, the coding region, and the upstream and the downstream, the, in the upstream and the downstream region of the, the coding re region, so many cis reg regulatory elements are located. So many, right? And the, the region is really big, and the cis regulatory element also evolved. And the, the one of the example of the cis regulatory element and the homology is uh, in the high brain reduction uh, with mutation of the PIT, PITX. And uh, in some species, PITX1 gene mutated. And the other species, high limb cis regulatory element of the PIT6, uh, PIT. The PITX1 is mutated. The finally they show the quite similar, uh, not exactly the similar, but the, the mutated phenotype with different mutation. And in this case, the comparison is a little bit complicated, right? So then, then. Uh, phenotypically, we can recognize hydrolimb, and uh, this one's uh, per pelvic fin is uh, homologous morphologically. Then, definitely, mutated part should be the same, but uh, basically the same gene, but the location is different. And the evolution of the gene and the evolution of the morphology is slightly different. This, in some case, the gene is duplicated, and their uh, cis regulatory element are also duplicated. In this such case, the situation will be much, much more complicated. So then it's quite hard to compare directly. The serial homology is, uh, this is kind of the really complicated problem in the field of the morphological, comparative morphology. I mean, uh, I already mentioned that zebrafish not only zebrafish, but vertebrate make these kind of the somite, segmentally arranged somite, right? Segmentally arranged somite, and the number increase and increase and increase, and finally this, uh, this will be 24 somite. And the uh, somite at the anterior part and the posterior part is, uh, the, looks like the exactly the same, right? And in such case, it's quite a difficult point is that uh, zebrafish somite one and uh, human somite one, can we compare between them? Yes, it's possible. But the number is different between species. For example, eel or snake has a lot, a lot, a lot of the somite. And eel is somite 5, or eel is somite 15, and human somite 15. How can we compare? Eel is somite 100 somite, and humans 100 somite. Sorry, human or chick or conventional vertebrate species has not so much 
this kind of the big number of the sunlight is, uh, is not common. But the eel or snake has a lot, a lot of the, the butterfly and the sunlight. And how can they compare? Okay, let's use a molecular marker. Yeah, sometimes it works. If oxygen shown us quite nice pattern. And this is just I talk about the the actual skeleton or sunlight. But in the head region also, head region also we can recognize the segmentary arranged the metameric pattern, the same pattern. Like a gill slit. And in the adult morphology, we easily recognize the difference. But in the early embryonic stage, they are they show the segmentary um, located the metameric pattern. Then they are quite, they are, this kind of relationship, metameric pattern in the cranial region, this is a, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it's a kind of problem. The, this is a serial homology, the problem of the serial homolog. Right, so then here, how can we define homology? and uh, which criteria is the best criteria for the identification of homology. And this is quite an uh, annoying problem, but uh, basically, uh, homology is uh, not, not try to find the essential content, or essential essence, or uh, like uh, essential chemical substance. There is no, chemical substance or ultimate chemical substance which defines a homology. So it's just a concept. Concept or the researcher define this and that is homologous. And let's try to solve the problem. And this definition or def definition gave us really nice solution or nice answer and after that, we realize, or well, we accept, uh, okay, this uh, A and B is homologous. This is kind of the procedure to solve the problem of the morphology, rather than find the, this is essential gene, or this is, that is, uh, it, it's, it's easily happened. For example, Pax6 defined I, or I development. And but uh, some uh, scallops, scallops, mollusk species can make eye-like structure, uh, photosensor organ, without expressing Pax6. So in this case, the criteria that Pax6 expressing uh, organ is uh, homologous, sometimes it doesn't work. It doesn't mean anything. It, it doesn't mean anything, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, this is kind of just an example. So let's define, I think this one and that one is homologous. The A and the B is homologous. Okay, I will explain their relationship. And finally, can you accept my explanation? Yes, okay. Then this means uh, they are homologous. Really, uh, look, sounds like really highly biased to the human recognition. It's just a term for term, yeah. communication. Communication or, yeah, it's a it's little bit unavoidable. Um, it's quite unavoidable because uh, uh, sh recognize shape or form is a, a certain part of the, uh, this study is biased by the human recognition, right? But definition is always biased. Biased, but if this definition or terminology explained the nature, what happened in nature, is good. So then paraphyletity or monophyletity also like this. And the, and the, and the way why I specifically explain the serial homolog is serial homolog make us problem. Make us problem, yeah. Thank you.